Moses from Exodus 18, 9 through 27 in the Bible. Moses was one of the greatest men in the Bible. And in all of history, Moses' story has many big moments. The burning bush, the plagues of Egypt, the parting of the Red Sea, the giving of the Ten Commandments. But even a big important hero like Moses had moments where he realized that he couldn't do it all. So when his father-in-law Jethro visited, Jethro advised him to share his responsibility of leading the Israelites' people with other judges. Moses was humble enough to take Jethro's advice. Bottom line, we're willing to be humble. Like Moses, we can be heroes too. Stay tuned for our skit and a word from Captain Cam. Seeker your employment agency, you've tried the rest and I'll try the best. Do you have a position that you need to fill? We're just calling us and you know we will. We're always available early or late as long as it's weekday and never past eight. Now what can I do for you? Hello? Hello? I'm getting tired of that. Mary, who's next? That gentleman over there, I think. You don't know? No. You can go talk to him. His name is Thomas. Are you Thomas? I am. Nice to meet you. What can I do for you? Nothing. Nothing? Not a thing. Oh, you don't need to hire anybody. Yes, I do. I'm a businessman and I need to hire a new assistant. Well, that's good. We have many good people here. Thanks, but I don't need your help. You don't? I don't, know. I am a very successful businessman and I'm good at my job. So, I don't need your help doing anything. Alright, but I have a question. What? Why did you come here if you don't want us to help you? Because uh, earlier today I had a meeting in the other office in this building. And? And I just sort of ended up here somehow. You're lost? I am not lost. Well, to get out of the building, you just go straight through and take a left. Thanks, but I don't need your help getting out of here. Um, can I make a suggestion, Thomas? No, you always learn customers all. I'm not your customer. Oh yeah, okay. Well, do you know what you need? A new assistant? No, you need humility. Humility? Yes, I'm sure you're a very important businessman and all that, but even businessmen need humility. You shouldn't be afraid to admit when you're wrong. Yeah, I guess you're right. Do you know what else you need? What? A new assistant. And I have the names and numbers of everyone that'll fit you perfectly. What are you waiting for? Call them up. Well, Mary, good job. I have my moments. Thanks. I'll ever, whenever I get out of here, I'll tell everybody how great the Fair Employment Agency is. Thank you. Is there anything else? Yes. How do you get out of here? Well, you just go straight to the building and take a look. Hey, everybody. Welcome to this week's Bible lesson on uh, Bible Heroes. Um, we have been talking about, you know, virtues that Bible heroes have, and so far we've covered faithfulness, obedience, and forgiveness. And this week we're going to talk about a virtue that some people may be surprised by, but I think it has more to do with the fact that they misunderstand what it means. Um, this week we're going to be talking about uh, being humble, humility. And the reason I say people misunderstand it is some people consider humility or being humble, they think that you have to be weak or that you have low self-esteem or, or something like that. But humility has more to do with understanding who you truly are. Um, especially in relationship to who God is. You can be a strong person, you can be a smart person, you can be a really strong and really smart person, but God is always going to be stronger and God is always going to be smarter. And you have to realize that, you know, if you're humble, you'll realize that no matter how strong or how smart or how pretty you are or whatever, that there's always going to be situations in life that are bigger than your ability to deal with them. So if you're humble, you'll be better able to recognize what you're able to accomplish and know when that you need to reach out to God. 
and understand that he's always able to handle what you're not able to handle. I hope that made sense. But this we were talking about Moses. And you know, Moses had all these things that, that happened in, in his life in, in the Bible. You know, um, you know he, God spoke to him through the burning bush and told him that he was going to use him to free his people from Egypt. Um, you know, he used Moses to send the plagues on Egypt to, to, to show Pharaoh the power of God. Um, he, you know, was able to part the Red Sea uh, so that the Israelites could cross across the Red Sea and get away from the, the Egyptians. And so, you know, God had used Moses in some really powerful and really cool ways. And, you know, it would have been easy to, to understand where Moses could have got a little bit of pride you know I mean I must be something special because God used me to do all this stuff and and he could have gotten very prideful you know but he didn't um, you know uh, one other thing that I forgot to mention was the fact that you know Moses actually got to go spend time with God on, on top of a mountain while God gave him the Ten Commandments and everything so like I said a lot of things in Moses life could have gave him a reason to be puffed up and proud but he didn't do that um, you know, when, when the Israelites were moving through the desert on their way to the land that God had given them, uh, after they had gotten out of Egypt and everything, Moses' father-in-law comes to visit. And so we're going to tell this story, little story real quick, and it comes from Exodus chapter 18, and we're going to start in verse 9 and go to 27. And this is what it says. Jethro was delighted when he heard about all the good things the Lord had done for Israel as he rescued them from the hand of the Egyptians. Praise the Lord, Jethro said, for he has rescued you from the Egyptians and from Pharaoh. Yes, he has rescued Israel from the powerful hand of Egypt. I know now that the Lord is greater than all other gods because he rescued his people from the oppression of the proud Egyptians. Then Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, brought a burnt offering and sacrifices to God. Aaron and all the elders of Israel came out and joined him in a sacrificial meal in God's presence. The next day, Moses took his seat to hear the people's disputes against each other. They waited before him from morning till evening. When Moses' father-in-law saw all that Moses was doing for the people, he asked, What are you really accomplishing here? Why are you trying to do all this alone while everyone stands around you from morning till evening? Moses replied, Because the people come to me to get a ruling from God. When a dispute arises, they come to me and I am the one who settles the case between the quarreling parties. I inform the people of God's decrees and give them his instructions. <clears throat> this is not good, Moses' father-in-law exclaimed. You're going to wear yourself out, and the people too. This job is too heavy a burden for you to handle all by yourself. Now listen to me, and let me give you a word of advice, and may God be with you. You should continue to be the people's representative before God, bringing their disputes to him. Teach them God's decrees and give them his instructions. Show them how to conduct their lives. But select from all the people some capable, honest men who fear God and hate bribes. Appoint them as leaders over groups of 1,000, 100, 50, and 10. They should always be available to solve the people's common disputes. But have them bring the major cases to you. Let the leaders decide the smaller matters themselves. They will help you carry the load, making the task easier for you. If you follow this advice, and if God commands you to do so, then you will be able to endure the pressures, and all the, these people will go home in peace. Moses listened to his father-in-law's advice and followed his suggestion. He chose capable men from all over Israel and appointed them as leaders over the people. He put them in charge of groups of 1,000, 100, 50, and 10. These men were always available to solve the people's common disputes. 
they brought the major cases to Moses, but they took care of the smaller matters themselves. Soon after this, Moses said goodbye to his father-in-law, who returned to his own land. <clears throat> so when Jethro visited the Israelites in the desert, he saw something that concerned him, and it was the fact that he you know, saw his son-in-law going out and meeting with the people, and he would stay out there every day from morning to evening. And I don't care how strong you are or how smart you are or, or whatever, eventually you're just going to wear out. I mean, because it was endless from morning to night. People were bringing their problems to him, and Moses was having to hear all of their stuff and having to make decisions about all this stuff. And I'm sure Moses had other stuff that he needed to be taken care of. So sometimes you can get too busy doing good stuff to be of any good to anybody. But anyway, um, so anyway, Jethro gave him this suggestion about breaking things down into smaller bunches, you know, getting these, these godly men to, to be leaders over smaller groups like thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens, and let them handle the smaller stuff, and then the big stuff Moses could still take care of. But the reason that this shows humility is that because of everything else that Moses went through, he could have figured, I've got this. I can handle this. I mean, if I can, you know, part the Red Sea, if I can, you know, you know, be so special that God chose me to, to do all this stuff, you know, he could have figured, okay, well, I can handle this too. But he was humble, so he was able to listen to Jethro's suggestion and actually, you know, prayed about it, I'm sure, and, and, and listened to Jethro and said, you know, it kind of makes sense. You know, I, I do have... God does have other things that he, that he would like for me to do, and, and I will get burnt out. But it, it took Jethro bringing that suggestion to him, and it took Moses' humility to allow him to take that suggestion from Jethro. Because uh, sometimes we just think that, that we can handle it all. And I can tell you a little bit from personal experience, sometimes you get tired. And uh, so sometimes you do have to back off and... and, and say, you know what, somebody else is going to have to handle this. Uh, or, or this is just too big for me. I'm going to let God handle this one. And, uh, and so look, you know, all of y'all are like really awesome. Uh, we, we love all of y'all and y'all are awesome. And, and God has a plan for every one of your lives. But you can't do it alone. Um, even if God, you know, gives you the plan you're still going to have to be able to recognize what part of it you can accomplish and what part of it you're going to have to get God involved. And you're going to have to reach out to him and ask him, you know, like, you know, what do you want me to do, God? And, and, and God, please give me the strength to, to do what it is you've asked me to do. Give me the wisdom to do the things that you've asked me to do. But, but you're always going to have to remember that all that strength and all that wisdom and everything, it ends up coming from God. And you won't ever remember that if you're not humble and don't remember who you truly are in relation to God. Um, you know, you might have trouble with a certain subject at school. Um, and, you know, ask for help. Um, you might have somebody... You know, a friend that is pressuring you to do things that you know you shouldn't do, but, you know, the pressure's there. You know, ask God for help. You know, go talk to your parents. You know, tell them what's going on. Ask, ask for their, their opinion, you know. You don't have to handle all these decisions on your own. Um, you might be struggling with some type, some type of emotion, sadness or, or, or feelings, you know, that you just don't understand. You know, take them to God. You know, talk to, to an adult that you, that you trust, you know. And, and get their advice. Um, it, it's okay. You know, you don't have to be able to figure everything out. Um, God wants you to be humble. He wants you to recognize that you need help. And the reason why is because God wants to be your helper. You know, because if you can do it on your own, God doesn't get any of the glory. So God wants you to depend on Him. He wants you to lean on Him. 
<clears throat> he wants to walk with you through life. You know, no matter if you're young or old, he wants to be right there with you. And he wants to be the one that gives you the strength and courage and, and the comfort that you need in every situation. He wants you to turn to him and rely on him for everything that you need. And the last thing it says, it says, you can't do that if you think you're perfect. If you think that you're perfect and you've got all the tools you need and you've got all the strength you need and you've got all the wisdom you need, <clears throat> you know, it's going to be hard for you to depend on God. You know, so you have to let go of the pride and embrace humility. It's, it's, it's a virtue. It's a good thing to be humble. And even big heroes like Moses were humble. And I don't know about you, but I hope I'm act like Moses did. But um, that's the lesson for this week, and so we will talk to you all next week. Bye-bye.